I love ballet. Now, I never had the body for it. <laughs> hey, you dance? I used to. I liked a lot of elements of the story. I wanted to do an interracial romance. I'd wanted to do that for a while, and I was developing a couple of stories, and I read this script that Paramount was interested in making, and it was a great story idea. The script needed work, but the idea was great, and there were some interesting characters, and so I decided to, to come on board and work on it. So we worked on the script for about nine months before we even started casting or anything. I got sent the script, um, and I met with Thomas Carter, and I told him basically that I love to dance and that I would, I don't care if my toes bleed, like I, I'll do the training as, as hard as I can. And I, and I was really, I didn't want to be doubled. Like I, I, I was like, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll work really, really hard. Just don't double me. And I was actually much more comfortable with the hip hop than I was with the ballet. Sarah, how you get your leg to twist like that? Yeah, what's up with all that? Her, definitely her world is turned upside down. Um, and she, is out of place, but she's willing to rise to that challenge. The opportunity in this movie, and this was particularly attractive to me, is that the movie's told about a white girl who goes into a black environment rather than a black character who goes into a white environment, which is what we normally see. It's the white girl coming into the, the black world. And I think what makes it resonant in this movie is that Julia doesn't act like a scared little, you know, uh, wimpy white girl, you know, like she's tough. God, this place is tight, right? It's so cool. What is up with this place? Seems like they're letting anybody in. Quit it, Nikki. Quit what? I ain't walking on eggshells just because you brought the Brady Bunch to the Negro Club. Maybe you came to the wrong spot, because I'm pretty sure there aren't any Negroes here. The one thing I really liked about Julia was that she just has a subtlety as an actress. She has an honesty as an actress that goes far beyond her years, and I wouldn't have expected that. but. It's what she brings to, to her work, and she brought it to this film. So I was excited to work with her, and no, nobody's worked harder than she did on this movie, from learning ballet to learning hip-hop dance to doing the acting in the film. I mean, it was a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. I did like a, a month and a half of training, you know, four to six hours a day before we started shooting. And then when we were shooting, I was working seven days a week because I would film from Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday I'd work with the choreographers. Um, but it was so much fun for me because, that, I mean, that's why I wanted to do the movie because I love to dance, and, and it was like I got to pretend to be a professional dancer for a while. So how do you like steps? Once you got used to the music. It wasn't the music that I had to get used to, Derek. That's not the first time I've heard hip-hop. Uh-huh. I bet you listen to it all the time. Sean Patrick Thomas, uh, we, we auditioned along with a lot of other, uh, other guys, some dancers we auditioned. Um, and he was a really good actor. We liked him, but he wasn't a great dancer. It got down to the last audition, and I had to uh, do a couple of scenes from the movie. And I had to uh, also do a dance routine that they taught me like right there on the spot. I think I got the first step right, and maybe like the last step right, and then I messed up everything else in between. We knew that the acting was the most important thing and that we would train the actor to dance and hope that we would get somebody to give a good performance. So we put Fatima Robinson with him and with her, her assistant, uh, Rich, uh, Richmond, and Richmond sort of took Sean around the clubs in Chicago and sort of immersed him in the life of hip-hop culture and hip-hop clubs. They taught him in, in uh, our studios um, how to dance, and he worked really hard and actually became a good dancer. Sean likes to be modest. He definitely has rhythm, and he's. We would go out to clubs, and he'd work it. But, but he didn't have any like formal training. So, um, but, but like with me, I had to sort of, pre like there were times where it was more like physical comedy for me. I had to pretend that I was the nerdy white girl. There's one scene that Julie and I just completely winged it. Really, the scene, the first scene where uh, I'm kind of teaching her how to walk and how to sit, and you know, just how to just kind of like chill. Like, none of that was really scripted. We just kind of were just winging that, you know? And uh, I'm shocked at how much of that ended up in the movie. Uh, uh, make the sound with me. Come on. Uh, uh. <laughs> Wait, you sitting down for tea or something like that? And I said, just slouch a little bit, slouch. <laughs> like, a lot of actors wouldn't want to wing it. They'd be like, well, I need a script. Like, you know, I need to know what's happening next, you know? But me and Julia were like, okay, well, Let's just see what happens, you know? And it ended up being a lot of fun. He's like the, um, 
the tough guys, like the, um, he just got out of jail, juvenile jail, for doing something, I don't know. And then him and Derek are like best friends, and Malachi kind of looks at life a little bit different. The vibe of Malachi in the movie is totally Fredro, and yet he's such a great guy. He actually sings on the soundtrack. He's got a song on the soundtrack. Uh, and he brought a level of authenticity to the movie. So uh, when I saw him early on, I knew, you know, I, I wanted to make that happen. What made sense to me about the, the storyline with Malachi is that he and I did petty crimes and stuff as kids. And when he covered for me and allowed me to escape and he went and did my, went and did my jail time, the way I thought of it was that he, in a part, is responsible for the success I have now. He's the one that allowed me to be able to go to school and get straight A's and have this, this future. I cast a couple of other people that were really exciting to me. Kerry Washington, who plays Chenille in the movie. She plays the first girl who befriends Julia at school. She is a terrific actress and, and sort of a find, because I'd never seen her on anything before. She was fresh out of college. Cool outfit. Slamming. Slamming outfit. I do help Sarah. I think we help each other, because I think that Chenille is really in need of intimacy and in need of friendship. And Sarah is in need of those same things, but in a different way. She also needs to be um, introduced to this world and this culture of um, young black kids and the music and the dance and I think that I help her from the clothes she's wearing to the to the language she uses I really help to sort of be her liaison into this new world and of course Chenille is a single mom in the movie she's a teenage mom and her life is not easy and that's the other thing I didn't want to do when I first got to the script there was a teenage mom in the movie uh, and we just kind of glossed over it. It was as if life was okay. She was a teenage mom, didn't seem to be that big of a problem, that much responsibility. That's not how it is. It's tremendous responsibility. Life is not easy when you're a teenage mom. You more than likely are not going to have a partner to share that with, and so it's really difficult. Washington's character, Chanel, would think that, you know, it's almost an insult to black women that he's, that her brother is dating a white girl. Um, and that's just an issue. I mean, that's just something that has to be confronted, I think. I'm glad that the movie doesn't shy away from that. There has been this sort of cliche that's not a cliche, but because a lot of black women don't have a problem with it, but a lot of black women do have a problem with black men going with white women because they feel like they're losing their men. And I wanted to have that point of view expressed, not in just an angry, racist way, but in a way that sort of came from uh, a deeper understanding of what this particular character in the movie was afraid of and what it was that she was missing in her, her own life and how it affected how she looked at her friend. I said something to Sarah. What? About how maybe Nikki had a point about black men and white women. What? You said what? I'm sorry. I was tripping off Kenny. That was the first scene, the first day that me and Carrie shot. And for the first few takes, neither one of us could, like, form the words with our mouths because our mouths were just, like, frozen. We were just shocked at how cold it was. I was pretty scared and kind of, like, a little nervous that first day and on top of that freezing. So I think the first day was the hardest. It took about three days to film the last audition scene. Um, and that was like dancing all day long, but the choreography is so hot that it was like enjoyable for me to do that. And you know, I got to perfect it more and more. And I was the perfectionist. I would be like, you know, Thomas would say, "Okay, let's move on," and I'd be like, "No, I got to do it again because I did this move wrong, and I could have hit this mark better." You know. Thomas, you know, he was, uh, you know, uh, he wanted to shoot a lot. You know, like we would like do every scene, like you know, a lot of times. You know, and every every time we did it, it had different adjustments, different every different nuances, you know, um, we shoot it from different angles. I think he's like really, really good at editing because he brought out some of the aspects of this movie that I had no idea existed while we were shooting. Um, and what I mean is that like, I guess maybe just as an actress you're not really conscious of how things are coming across, but I remember being in the club with him and, and it, we, we were in the club for maybe two weeks and I was just like, I would look around and I'd be like, God, this is so exciting. And I walked up to him and I was like, this is hot, this is working, you know. And I think that he shares a love of dance too, so that definitely came across. Miss Johnson, I can't say this on the record yet, but welcome to Juilliard. Ha <laughs> ha! 
I'm really proud of how the movie balances like the serious social issues that it deals with with the really entertaining, fun scenes. Because like, as much as these kids are faced with the obstacles in their lives, when they go to the club and they go dancing with their friends, they're just having fun and having a good time. Some people are still hanging on to all this old baggage. They're still uptight about being with somebody who's from another culture or another race, or their parents are uptight about it, or their friends might be. And so I wanted to make a movie that took a look at that in a modern context. And the idea of setting that against a hip-hop backdrop was really exciting to me. I think Save the Last Dance is going to be that movie that touches a lot of different people, a lot of different ge generations, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it has one set audience. What I'm most proud of is that it's a quality film. What I'm most proud of is that it's an old-fashioned fairy tale romance that, that you believe. It's not just some sexed up teen nonsense, you know, it's a real relationship. And I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to do that honestly and do it truthfully.